I picked up this Terry Prism road bike from my friend Ann. Uh, it's a women's road bike. Notice that the front wheel is smaller than the rear wheel. That was intentional. Uh, it was designed so it could have a smaller frame and be lower to the ground for a shorter person. And my friend Ann, she's about 5'1", 5'2", so I think this will be a good fit for her. Now my plan is just to tear it down, clean it, uh, lube it up, rebuild it, and uh, mostly leave it uh, kind of original uh, with a little bit of update. Now, a previous owner had replaced the, the drop bars that it originally came with with these riser handlebars on there. I'm going to switch it back to uh, drop bars. I am going to update it from these down tube shifters. I'm going to put brifters on there. I'm going to leave it at 14 speed for now. I, in a future uh, update, I may uh, go to increase the gearing, but I'm going to leave it at 14 for right now. Uh, somebody had replaced the rear derailleur. I probably originally came with a Shimano Exit rear derailleur, but now has the Sunrace derailleur. I'm, I'm kind of guessing they did that uh, to accommodate these larger cogs on there. But I'm going to replace this, uh, go with like a Shimano uh, Dior rear derailleur, which I think uh, should still allow for some like larger gearing back there, but it's going to be a little bit more uh, appropriate for this, this bike. Anyway, I think it's going to be a really cool bike, and I think she's going to like it, and it's going to be a lot of fun to work on. Okay, let's start taking it apart. Start with the wheels. Seat and seat post. It'll be getting all brand new cables and housings. Remove the brake. Remove the other brake. Remove the down tube shifters. Now I'm going to be installing a brand new fresh chain on here so the chain is going. And off with the derailleur. And remove the uh, crank here. And remove the bottom bracket here. And removing the fixed cup uh, is often an adventure. It's always fun. Okay, and there it goes. It's turning. It was on there tight. Now these grips are pretty worn, so I don't plan on reusing them on this or any other bike anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut them off here. That. And then remove this brake lever here, just loosen this clamp and slide this guy off like that. And so now that I have those off the one side there, I can loosen this clamp here on the stem and slide these handlebars out of there like that. And then remove this stem here. Hopefully it's not seized and no, it's nice and smooth. And then remove the, uh, the headset here, the fork. Like that.
Now I can remove the cups, but I don't think that's really necessary. I'm gonna leave those in. And remove the front derailleur. And then there's like a little uh, axle stop back here, so I'll take that off. And then there's an old bike store sticker on here. I'm gonna remove that just to kind of clean this up a little bit. Now using some hot soapy water, scrub brush, degreaser, I can work on uh, cleaning up the frame. Well, I got all the parts all cleaned up. I, I used hot water and just soap, a scrub brush, and some degreaser, and got them all nice and clean and ready to install. I'm gonna start by uh, installing the fork. This is the lower headset cup. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with grease in here. And then I have the bearing here, and I've already uh, put grease in, in the bearing there, so I'll go ahead and set this in there like that, and the grease will hold it in place. And I have the top cup here, and I'm we'll gonna go ahead and fill the uh, race here with uh, grease. And this is uh, marine grease, if anybody wants to know. And then I have the, uh, the bearing here, and I'll set this in there. Uh, oriented the way that it had uh, come out of there. And then there's a little uh, dust seal, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this in here like this, and set this down here like that for right now. And then run the fork up through here, and start screwing this cup down onto the top of the fork. And then I'm gonna install a uh, the keyed washer on here. And I'm, there was a reflector on here, but I'm not gonna reinstall the, the reflector, so I'm going to just install a little uh, spacer. And then I've got the uh, lock nut here. And so I'll get this on here. And then tighten the lock nut on here like this. Boom. And make sure it turns nice and smoothly. Doesn't feel like there's play in there. Good. Okay, so I've got the drive side cup here and I've already got grease down the race and I've packed the bearing here. So I'm gonna slide the bearing in here, again with the orientation that it came out there. And I wanna put just a little bit, just run a little bit of grease out along the, uh, the threads of the cup here. Uh, don't need a lot, but uh, it'll just kind of help uh, take it off later on and then thread this in and on this bike, most bikes it's going to screw in counterclockwise. Uh, the exception are French and Italian made bikes mostly that might have uh, right hand threaded drive side cups and they would screw in uh, clockwise. And be careful, make sure that you don't cross thread it. And then I want to get it on there pretty tight. So I'm gonna get my wrench on here like this and I'll use my mallet to kind of tap it around here. And get it on there nice and tight. And then over here on the non-drive side, I've got the axle. I've got this little uh, dust shield that'll slide right in there and I'll slide the axle in here like this. And I have the uh, cup here. I already have some grease in there and I've already packed the uh, bearing with some grease. So I'll slide this in here like this. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and just put like a little bit of grease, just a little bit of grease just around on the threads there. This will also help keep like moisture and stuff out of there. And then this will thread in clockwise. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Should turn in nice and smoothly. And I'm gonna tighten this in so it goes in against the bearings and I can feel it. And then I'm just gonna back it off just a hair. And then I've got the lock ring here and I'm gonna thread this on here like this. Now the trick is to try to get this, uh, the, the adjustable cup here tight to where there's not enough, play, there's not play, but uh, 
it turns smoothly. So you've got to find that fine line between that. And so I'm going to kind of tighten that there, turn the axle there, maybe loosen it just a little bit. And I can tighten this and feel this, feel for play. And that actually feels pretty good. So I'll use this tool to kind of hold the adjustable cup and I'll use this tool here to tighten the lock ring into place. <clears throat> and then feel for play and freeness and it's turning smoothly and I'm not really feeling play in there so that's good. Okay, next I want to install the crank here, the drive side crank, and uh, due to uh, uh, unevenness in the machining of the axle and the mating surfaces inside here, you'll find that um, in different positions on this axle, the square table axle, that there'll be uh, more or less wobble. So what you want to do is try um, a couple different positions, you know, like maybe even try all four positions, but find one that doesn't have wobble and this one actually looks pretty good so I'm going to just go ahead and stay with that but sometimes uh, you go ahead and pull it off try the next position turn it look for wobble uh, pull it off try the next position and one of the four positions is likely to have less wobble than the others you know I, by wobble I mean the uh, chain rings are going to go in and out like that and then install this nut here Again, check it. That looks good. And now this side here just gets installed 180 degrees from the other uh, crank arm. Um, one thing I didn't show on the other side is I wiped down the, uh, the spindle. You want to kind of uh, get any grease or oil off of the spindle uh, because the crank arm is held on by friction and as you press it on it's being held on. If you get grease on there you're going to end up having to push it on. The grease will allow it to be pushed on farther and farther than it normally would and not hold it quite as well and also it has potential to uh, crack the uh, crank arm there. So slide this on here. Get the nut in here. And just tighten this on like that. Next I want to install the front derailleur here and so it's going to slide on here and I'm just going to kind of uh, get this bolt uh, started over here. I want to have this adjusted so that the cage, uh, like the, the outer part of this cage is parallel to this uh, chain ring there and I want to have it so that when it swings out that the uh, bottom of this uh, cage here misses the uh, teeth by uh, just like a couple millimeters. So I'll slide it down here and get it closer. And then tighten it into place. Now when I got the bike it had this derailleur on here which is uh, this big ugly sun race derailleur. It's like plastic, probably pretty low end, uh, but I'm not going to use that. Instead I have this uh, Shimano Dior DX uh, rear derailleur and I think it's just going to look nicer on this bike. It's a little bit more appropriate for the uh, vintage of this bike. And so I'll just mount this on here like this. Okay, so I'm installing a, a newer cassette on there. The other, there's nothing wrong with the other one, but this is just a little bit newer, a little nicer looking. And so I'll slide this on here like this and get this all lined up there and get the lock ring on here. and then tighten it down to about uh, 40 newton meters. Like that. And install the skewer. 
and then install the rear wheel like this. Just slide it back into place. Make sure it's all the way back and centered and then clamp it into place like that. So I have a brand new chain here and I need to uh, install it and I'm going to need to size it. So I'm going to install the whole thing as is and I'm going to be installing it on the small chain ring in the front and the small cog on the back. Now, uh, with it on the, uh, the small uh, chain ring in the front and the small cog on the back, I'm going to bring the chain together here. And I'm using like this little bit of a uh, little coat hanger here to kind of hold the uh, little parts together. And with it on the small, small like that, I want to make sure that this chain is not coming up and rubbing against this cog there. And that actually looks pretty good with the chain completely uncut like this. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this master link that uh, comes with the, uh, the chain. It's called Missing Link. I thought I was going to have to cut this chain, but apparently not. And then join the two ends of the chain together. Pull this little coat hanger part off here. And just join the two ends. They lock into place and pull the chain apart. Boom, there we go. And then next I want to install the stem there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of uh, grease down onto the uh, stem here. And that'll help create a barrier between the dissimilar metals and help uh, prevent galvanic corrosion, which would cause the stem to become seized in there. Like that, just a thin coating is all it really takes. And slide this in there like that and get it roughly straight. I'm going to get it down past the minimum point there and then just tighten the stem roughly straight. I'll straighten it later but just at least get this in place right now. Next I want to get the front brake installed so just slide this through here like this and slide the little uh, concave washer on the back there. Get this nut on here Get it roughly centered into place here. And there'll be adjustment when I get the wheel installed. And slide the rear brake on here like this. It's got the concave washers. Just a little washer, flat washer. And the lock nut. that and slide the front wheel on to see what it looks like here okay I dug through my pile of bars and I found these uh, they're about uh, 38 uh, centimeters across so pretty narrow and the clamp size is 25.4 uh, which is what the stem is so I think they'll work pretty well um, Anyway, to go install them, it's sort of like uh, doing like a, a Chinese little uh, puzzle. Kind of like go in this direction and then kind of bring it up here and then turn the handlebars and bring them over this way and kind of get them all lined up. And then I don't want to scratch them up any more than they are now. So I have some reversible uh, like uh, reverse pliers here that I can use to kind of open the uh, little clamp here and I can slide the handlebars in there without scratching them all up and kind of get them light centered here like that and then tighten down the little uh, clamp bolt here Now when I got the bike, it had this uh, little uh, seat clamp on here and it was like completely wrong for this bike. I don't even know what the heck this is for, but uh, this is like completely wrong. So 
I have like a little uh, binder bolt here, so I'm going to slide this into place like this and slide this in from this side and screw this in. I'm not going to clamp it down at this point. And then I'm going to reinstall the seat post here and I'm going to put like a, uh, a thin coating of uh, marine grease on here to help uh, prevent uh, it seizing for uh, the, the galvanic corrosion, just thin layer there. And then slide this in. I may end up having to install a uh, longer seat post, I'm not sure. I'll see how it fits uh, my friend. And then tighten this down here. I don't need to crank it down at this point, but kind of just tighten that in place. So I'm ready to install the shifters here. They're Shimano RSX shifters, which I really like. Uh, and so I can slide it on here like this and work it up here into position, kind of get it roughly in position here. And the little uh, clamp bolt here is hidden under the hood on the side here. So I have like a five millimeter long uh, little uh, hex wrench here. And I can get it in there, get in the screw, and then just tighten it down a little bit, kind of so it'll kind of stay in place here. And then I want the bottom of the brake lever lined up with the bottom of the handlebar here, so I can lower this down just a little bit, just kind of get it down in position here, and then tighten this in place. Make sure it's straight this way as well. And I can always adjust these a little bit later on too, to a certain extent. Tighten that down. And the other side is basically the same. Just slide it on here. Work it up into place here. Tighten the clamp ball a little bit. Get this here. Lower it down, tighten this, and I want to eyeball this to make sure that they look like they're the same angle, that one's not lower or higher than the other. Even though these uh, are about the same, it's possible that one might be slightly lower or higher than the other. And when I get them in uh, so that they look like they're even, I'll go ahead and tighten this down as well. Since I'm going to be using brifters, I'm not going to have down tube uh, shifters here. So I'm going to use these mounts uh, to hold uh, cable stops here. And so I have some uh, little Shimano cable stops. These are concave versions, but they, they always come in flat ones. But most times they use uh, these little concave versions. And then they're just held on by a little screw and one on this side also okay so now I'm up to the point where I'm going to start hooking up the shifters and what I need to do is cut some cable housing I need a piece of cable housing to go from here to here but I can't have it just going a straight line what I need to do is have enough slack in it so as the handlebars turn that it'll have enough room to wrap around the uh, the head tube there without binding. So what I could do is just kind of put this here, wrap this around here like this, and kind of get a rough uh, length here to where that looks like it'll probably be good right right there. And so I bring this around here, and so. I'll go ahead and cut the cable housing right here. And then to double check it here, I'll put it into the cable stop and into the shifter and turn this around here like this. And that actually looks pretty good like that. It doesn't bind around the head tube. And so I'm gonna cut a piece the exact same length for the other side, because it should be the same length. So I'll just put these side by side here, come down here and snip it right there like that. Now what I usually do here is I'll go with the uh, cutters here and I'll just kind of massage 
the ends of the cable a little bit and then that opens up the lining in there and then I can use a uh, like a scribe or an awl here to kind of poke down into the lining to open that up to uh, open up the hole there to allow the uh, the cable to go in and out and it'll do that on both ends of the cable housings here. Now I want to insert the cable into the brifter here so what I'm going to do is press the uh, small lever here and so it shifts all the way in the one direction and then I can slide the uh, the cable through the shifter and pull it all the way through like this and then I got my cable housing here I'm going to stick a ferrule onto each end of the cable housing here and then slide the cable housing onto the shift cable slide the shift cable through the cable stop here and pull the cable through getting the housing all nice into place like that slide the cable through the little uh, cable guide underneath the bottom bracket and pull that through like that and then I need to cut a piece of cable housing to go from this cable stop around to the barrel adjuster on the derailleur here and I want it to form a somewhat smooth loop so I can go ahead have this in here and bring this around here like this I think that'll be okay maybe cut it just a hair longer than what I think like that I've opened up the ends of the housing with the uh, the scribe there and uh, put ferrules on each end here and then I'm going to slide the shift cable here through the cable stop slide it into the housing here and pull it through and get this fitted into there like that and I have the barrel adjuster here on the derailleur I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this out maybe about a turn and then I'll get my shift cable down through the barrel adjuster here get the housing seated into the barrel adjuster like this and then I'm going to pull the, the cable taut here and try to get everything nice and seated and then I'll loosen this little nut here get the cable into place there and then uh, tighten this down here on the cable like this okay so now I can test the shifting here so I'll just start turning this and I'll shift the, the uh, shift lever up one and it didn't quite go up to the uh, second cog there so I'm going to turn this barrel adjuster out here until it goes up to the second cog there then I'll shift down shift up shift up shift up not quite going so out just a little bit down shift up shift up shift up shift up shift down shift down shift down shift down shift down shift down and that looks pretty good so cut the cable here leave a little bit on there and get a crimp end on here like that and it can still probably use a little bit of fine tuning but we'll uh, see and then I want to set the limiting screws here so I'll shift this up back down and then I'm going to tighten this down just a little bit the uh, high limiting screw tighten that down up down it seems like it's already fairly well tightened there so it won't go back down past that small cog down so that looks pretty good so I'm gonna shift it all the way up to the big cog 
and then tighten the uh, low limiting screw down and then shift it down and then shift it up okay it's still going up there so let's see if I can tighten it down anymore and at this point it's almost not going up there so I'm going to loosen this just a little bit so I want to adjust the uh, load limiting screw so it'll push the chain up to the cog but not possibly any farther because I don't want to have this chain come off and uh, wedge between the cassette and the spokes that is uh, very bad so now I'm ready to hook up the uh, front shifter here so again I'm going to push this small lever here so that it shifts all the way in the one direction there and so that will allow the little part in here to line up and I can push the cable through here like this and I have the cable housing here I've already put ferrules on the ends there so I'm going to uh, slide the cable into the cable housing here then down through the cable stop here, push the cable through, and then pull the cable all the way through here like this, and wait till it gets fully seated into the shifter like that. Slide the cable down through this little uh, cable guide under the bottom bracket, and pull the cable up through the uh, stays here like this. Now I want to hook up and adjust the front derailleur. I'm gonna start off by shifting the rear derailleur all the way up to the big cog. Now with the chain on the big cog here, I'm going to adjust the uh, limiting screw here on the uh, front rail, the low limiting screw, to uh, have the cage come over and just barely touch the chain. So I'll just tighten this down till the cage comes over. And so it's just very lightly touching the, the, uh, the chain there. So now what I'll do is I'll take the cable I'll put it into this little uh, cable clamp right here, like this, and I'm going to pull the cable taut and then tighten down the uh, cl uh, little clamp screw here, little clamp uh, bolt, like that. And then I'm going to loosen that limiting screw so that the, the uh, cage moves about a millimeter or eh, about a millimeter or two away from the uh, chain so it's not rubbing against the chain anymore like that so now I can go ahead and test the shifting so I'll pedal it forward and shift up and it's not quite going up to the big ring so I'll go back down again and so now I can adjust the uh, barrel adjuster on the down tube uh, where you know was connected to the little uh, braze on there and try shifting it up again and not quite going up to the, the uh, big ring there and try uh, adjusting it out again a little bit more up down up down up down okay now shift it down to the uh, small ring in, uh, small uh, cog in the back and check it up to the big ring down up down up down and that that looks pretty good and then with the uh, the chain on the big ring I can tighten down the uh, high limiting screw here just tighten it down to where uh, it just starts to push the cage in just a little bit. I don't want it to be able to push the chain off of the uh, the big ring. I can feel start to feel a little resistance there, so let me try it now. So shift down, shift up, shift down, shift up. So that looks like it's shifting pretty well now. Go ahead and cut the cable. And I want to put a crimp end on here. And then I'll just kind of just bend this out of the way so that it's not going to rub against the cranks there. And all done with that. Okay, so now I want to start hooking up the brakes. I need to cut new cable housing, so I have some housing here. And how it's going to be routed is from 
the back of the brake lever along the inside of the handlebar here and then down to the brake here. Now one wrinkle is that right now the stem is all the way, you know, or pretty much all the way to the top there. Uh, we might end up lowering it so I don't want to have too much excess housing because then when we lower it we're gonna have even more. So I want to have just enough uh, that will work but it will uh, also accommodate if we lower the stem a little bit that we're not going to have overly too much either. So that being said I think probably right about there and so I'll go ahead and cut the housing right here like that and then after I made the cut I can go in and kind of clean up the ends there so they're kind of nice and flat that one looks then use my little uh, awl here to open up the linings and the ends there so the cable go through nicely cleanly and next I have some new brake cable so I'm going to slide it down through the little cable stop in there and slide it in through the hole of the back of the lever and so it starts coming out there. Now I'm ready to install the housing on the cable. Um, I don't need a ferrule in the back of uh, the shifter right here and also I tested a ferrule to see if it fit in this little uh, barrel adjuster down there and it doesn't fit in there so I don't need a uh, ferrule for that end either. So I'm just going to slide the cable into the housing and then pull it all the way through and get the housing uh, seated into the back of the shifter and just pull the cable all the way back here and make sure that the end of the uh, cable is fully seated into the little cable stop inside there and then routing um, like I said it's going to go along the inside there and so I think I have it go over these uh, two uh, cables here the two uh, shifter cables and so I'll run it down through the barrel adjuster here and then take another quick look at how it looks here because um, later I'm going to have this tape to the bar and then it'll be under the handlebar tape there and so I think that will work good and so now I'm going to run the cable back down through the uh, the cable clamp here on the brake and pull it all the way through like this okay so what I can do is kind of hold these uh, brakes uh, in pull the cable through they're tight let the brakes out just a little bit and then tighten this clamp down and kind of get a feel for how the brakes feel like that and I can squeeze the brakes uh, a little too tight not quite enough uh, lever movement so I'm gonna let it out just a hair and then tighten it back down here and feel the brakes that actually feels pretty good there, so I'm going to tighten this down like this. And now I want to start uh, taping the, uh, the cable housing here into place around the handlebar. Just put a little bit of tape there to kind of hold it there. Also kind of in this curve right here. Like that. And then also up here. And then there'll be handlebar tape covering the rest of this here. Boom. Now just cut the cable, leave it about an inch and a half on there. I'll put a little crimp end on there, crimp that on there to keep the uh, cable from uh, just, you know, all ragged or poking anything. So like that and all done there. Now I need to cut a piece of cable housing for the rear brake. And so what it's going to do is going to go from the brake lever along the inside of the handlebar over 
under uh, through here and then back here. So how I'm going to route that is I'm going to start from back here, push the cable housing through these little uh, top tube uh, cable holders here and pull the cable housing through. And now I want to adjust how much of the cable housing I have up here up front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the end of this into the back of the brake lever here and run it along to the inside of the handlebar here like this. And I have it routed to the inside of this other one here. And what I want to do is I want to have it so when I rotate the handlebars that there's enough cable housing here that it's not going to bind around the stem when I rotate the handlebars like this. Uh, right now there's a ton of extra, so I'm going to pull this through here. Like I said, uh, we may be lowering the stem there, so I don't want to have a ton of extra, but I want to have enough. So, because um, we may or may not be lowering the stem. We'll see how it fits my friend. And uh, that looks pretty good right there. I bring this around here, and so that actually looks pretty good there. So that if we lower the stem, we're not going to have a ton of extra like that. And then I have the part back here, and so I want to have a somewhat uh, nice smooth uh, curve there. And I want, since this moves up and down here like this, I want to have enough. I don't want to have it just limited so that it doesn't allow this to pull down. So I have a little bit of extra here, so I get this nice uh, curve here like this. And then I'm just going to cut it down here like this. Rather, it's better to have just a little too much than a little too little. So I cut that off there like this and then just clean up the end just a little bit. So I want to go ahead and push the cable through the little cable stop in the brake lever, push it out through the back of the lever so it comes out here and then through into the housing and then push the cable through the, the lever into the housing here so it goes all the way through the housing and then pull the cable through till it seats nice and cleanly into the uh, brake lever here. Boom, like that. Make sure that the uh, cable housing is seated fully into the back of the lever there. Okay, I'm gonna run the, the cable down through the barrel adjuster here and I'm gonna go right down into the uh, little uh, cable clamp here on the brake and bring this round down in here like this and get that seated and then I'll go ahead and pull the cable and pull the brake pads in and then let the pads out just a little bit and then tighten this clamp down and then test the uh, the brakes there. They're not centered, but I have uh, good movement on the lever. I might be able to belt adjust it out just a hair, but that's pretty good uh, for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down this clamp right here. And I can always use the barrel adjuster, kind of adjust the cable out a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna need to center the brake. So. And so now I'm going to tape the housing to the bars here. Looking good. And so to finish this off, I'll snip the cable there and put a crimp end on like this. Keep it from fraying or poking anything and done with that. And so now I got the wheel in a truing stand here and there's a little bit of a side-to-side -side wobble and so it's just gonna be a slow tedious works getting this uh, trued and so I'm not gonna video that whole thing but I'll get it nice and straight. Okay the wheels are trued so now I'm gonna center the rear brake here and I'm just gonna loosen this uh, little uh, nut here kind of straighten the brakes out a little bit and then tighten this nut again and then test them See, and they move much more evenly, so I'll go ahead and tighten this down all the way, test them again, and 
Yeah, so now they're moving much more evenly on both sides. I've installed some nice stainless steel bottle cage screws uh, to replace the, uh, the old ones that are in there or missing. Like this. And so they look really nice. And done. I wrapped the handlebars with some brand new handlebar tape. I mounted some SPD clipless pedals. I installed this saddle. Uh, it's a women's specific saddle made by Specialized. And I also adjusted the height for my friend. A last minute change I did was I replaced the cassette. There was nothing wrong with the other cassette that was on. There was a brand new cassette made by Shimano. But this one came in the mail yesterday. It's made by Saram. And it's got the same gearing, but it's just got this bright chrome. And I think that chrome just fits in beautifully with the rest of the bike. I think the bike came out really nicely. Uh, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button. You'll see new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a ton of stuff over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, sign up that page. And I post other stuff over there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.